Hello once again to all and sundry, and welcome back to what will be the finale of the Great Partition in Europa Universalis 4. Without further ado, let's get her going. Uh, my other episodes have generally taken, uh, I think it's been, uh, they've gotten through 12 to maybe 15 at the most years of game time. So this will probably extend a little bit beyond 30 minutes, but I don't think it'll be that extreme. I mean, it does end on the 1st of January, 1821, or I guess it might be the 3rd or something. Regardless, uh, we'll see how the last 15 or so years of this game play out. Who knows, maybe it'll be around 30 minutes and I'll be happy with how the timing worked out. So Persia, uh, they were fighting Russia earlier, as was Poland. Uh, doesn't look like Poland and Austria were able to do all that much. I mean, I think the result of that war might have been Tula to, uh, to Odiev. But they weren't even able to give him o uh, Odiev or Oka back. So uh, Persia has instead turned their gaze to Egypt again. It's taken them quite a while. You know, Persia was seemingly at war with Egypt almost constantly in uh, like the 1730s and 1740s, but uh, stopped after taking the Jordan and Is uh, Israel or Jerusalem area, and. Uh, Finally looking at him again, probably looking to take Lower Egypt itself. I'm also surprised that they haven't gone after Aretna, but I guess they've been content with their territory. I mean, they did expand heavily into Delhi earlier. And, uh, you know, Madurai is a great power, and but they don't have any alliances, and there are probably five techs behind. Persia could destroy them easily. Well, Na has even more Bengali separatists, or Bengali separatists. Khmer is the Celestial Emperor, but they actually have an Empire of China in name modifier that makes their mandate decrease even faster than uh, it did for any of the previous emperors. Maybe it has something to do with, you know, they're not, they're not Chinese culture, I don't think. You know, they're probably, you know, Khmer. <laughs> uh, and... I don't know if any of the regions they have cores in actually count as China. Still, right now, they lay claim to the Celestial Emperorship, and uh, we'll see if they can keep it. Their mandate's already at zero, so Wu could take it if they wanted. Lan Na could probably take it back if they wanted. Malaya could probably take it if they wanted. <laughs> have the mandate move even further south. Uh, right now, Russia has some Liang Separatists, I'm sure... They'll get their guys over here eventually, but they also have some Yiran separatists, as well as 53,000 Korean separatists. Japan is probably uh, eagerly awaiting 1808 when their truce with Great Britain is up, and they can try to take back the rest of Honshu. I don't think they ever lost anything in Kyushu, but, uh, I mean, before, before the last war, Great Britain had all of the northern half of Honshu, basically, as well as, uh, like, these provinces down here. Never got Kyoto, though. Do have some colonization occurring on New Zealand. Looks like it's been split between Norway and Brunei. Ah, uh, huh. Interesting to say that, right? And they actually have formed Brunei and Australia, as well as Ahuriri. Wow, I like it. For a second, I thought Gascony might try to get down there, but uh, I guess they're content with what they've got in the Maluccas in Western Australia. How are things looking in Central Europe? Austria is at peace. Poland is at peace. Dietra is at peace. Venice is at peace. Epirus and Morea at peace. Still with no allies. Odiev is at peace. Zaretna is at peace. Apparently, Persia has gone after Oman instead. Have they pieced this out again? Why? So I guess Persia is right back to their old tricks. They just, they attack Egypt and then piece them out without taking anything. You know, they might have taken like money or anything, but they didn't take any territory. Maybe they, like... 
Oman doesn't even have a truce with Egypt. Persia could have attacked them at any time. Not sure. The Persian AI has been acting pretty wonky. And armies are getting big now. I mean, Odiev, formerly, they, you know, would usually see them with 40k. Now we see them more with, like, 50, you know, now we see them with 70. It's pretty good. And they have connected their lands again, but being without Oka has got to be rough for them. You know, Odiev itself. So we see these two still on, uh, on tech 30. Though the current tech is definitely 31, and it might be... I, I don't think 32 comes around until about 1815, maybe. See Gascony on 31, Spain on 31. Carlos the second. Oh, De Castro. Hmm. Still have Rurikovic's in Gascony, a solid 333. Have George the third, Lancaster in Great Britain, and his heir Alfred. The Lancasters have been uh, getting some great errors this game. How about the Emperor? Joseph IV von Habsburg, and we'll have Joseph V following him, perhaps. Poland has managed to pick up uh, the Habsburgs as well. They have... Oh, sorry. That's a regency, but it's a great regency. A uh, 464 regent for a 644 heir. Dang. But theirs is actually the von Bambergs, who are also in the Knights, Sicily, and Livonia. Poland is warned by Russia. I hate warnings like that. That shouldn't be a warning that could happen. Like, I know Poland isn't quite a great power. I uh, still have Madurai, Malaya, and Gascony as kind of the, the second tier powers. But Poland is also in that list as well. Poland can have an army of 125,000. Admittedly, about less than half of Russia's. But, I mean, Poland, Austria, and Nitra... Those three can beat Russia if they uh, if they try hard enough. They have beaten Russia before. That should, you know, I, I wish there was a way to... I don't know. I, I just don't like that that warning can exist. You know, I think... Uh... I think that maybe the threshold that's needed to warn somebody should be uh, should be lowered a little bit. You know, like, the Ottomans... I think I've ranted about this in a previous episode, but one more time. The Ottomans should be able to warn everybody around them, with the exceptions of Karakoin, Lu, Hungary, uh, and the Mamluks. I, I, they don't share a border at start. But I know they border Karakoin, Lu. I know they border Hungary. Uh, they border Moldavia, but not Poland. So yeah, they should be able to warn everybody around them. Uh, I guess uh, they shouldn't be able to warn like Venice or Genoa, but they should be able to warn all of the, those little guys at start. You know, I think the power difference is big enough there. It makes sense. But... You know, uh, Poland, or, or uh, say the Ottomans, you know... I would compare this to, like, say... Say the Ottomans expand like they normally do. They eat up into Hungary a little bit. You know, maybe not up quite to Pest, but say they have a line of provinces starting at, like, Slavonia or something, or, or like, Donchikraji, and going east, uh, down to, like, you know, all of Wallachia, maybe up to, like, Maros, down to Silistria. Say they've conquered all of that in the Balkans. They've conquered fairly far east, maybe, maybe even to the Caspian. And they can say field an army of 85,000, and it's maybe 1530. If they were able to turn around and warn the Mamluks, who have not lost any territory, say, uh, and maybe can field, let's call it, 30k? I, I don't think that should be a warning that can happen. Okay, rant over. <laughs> Spain's fighting Egypt again. Uh, they probably just want this province here. I'm doubting that Spain will take too much out of Egypt. Though it looks like Elodius tried their luck again. And Egypt is focusing down there instead of on Spain in the north. Probably fair enough. You know. Again, I think this is the only thing. This three development former colony. I think that's the only thing that Egypt will lose. And they stand to lose a lot more if they lose to Elodia. 
Also, while we weren't looking, uh, Great Britain really put the herd on Kilwa. I mean, they took Kilwa itself, which is a 37 dev province, and, uh, yeah, I think that's Kilwa's power mostly broken. I don't even see them with an army. You know, they can't even get in between their Arabian and African provinces without boats. Persia, you didn't take anything from Oman either. <laughs> Are you just playing with people, fighting wars for the sake of going in and taking their money and leaving? Because that's not very nice. Uh, Let's hope uh, another... Okay. That looks like fun. Did uh, Austria attack the Pope again? The Pope who was allied only with Gascony? Oh, wow. Yep. So, Austrian reconquest of Urbino. And, uh... Looks like Malaya is up here possibly helping out now. Austria is at war with... Eh, no, it's only the Pope Gascony Siena. Still a big war, still a war that's worth watching, but I think the Austrian side has the advantage. I mean, I think, uh, I was talking about tier 2 powers last time, I think you could put Siena in there as well. But that's still, you know, one of the great powers, Austria, as well as a high second tier power, Poland, a decent power in Nitra, uh, as well as some help from Sicily and Malaya and Brabant. Yeah, I don't think the uh, papal side has a prayer for this war unless there's some really bad uh, army micro from a lot of different nations at once. I mean, <laughs> Malaya is sieging down Rome. Don't think that's something you'd see every day. do have a decent battle between Austria and Gascony here. It looks like, yep, Austria is out on top on that one. They do have a very good general, a 543. Gascony's not so great. He was only one star and might have died. <laughs> nope, he's alive, but he's only a 213. That's a that's a that's an early game general Gascony. What you doing, man? Anyways, I'm sure Austria will be getting their provinces back from the Pope here. There's Montenegro. He's occupying Montferrat in Siena. <laughs> uh, it's fun seeing those little guys uh, get out, get over and participate. I mean, of course, uh, Montenegro is a Nitran vassal, but still no action from Epirus or Morea, though Morea does have a 363. But Epirus is a mountain province. Gotta be wary about attacking into that. Um, Persia, you're silly. <laughs> Morocco did take some things from Egypt. Spain took about what was expected, just Tajhari. Looks like Elodia. I think they white pieced. Kilwa is at war with Oman, but that does leave this all pretty easy, uh, you know, pretty open. Great Britain won't be able to attack for quite a few years, if four, but I think Kilwa might lose a bit more the, the remainder of its heartland there. But Cuba stayed strong. They did lose uh, Kayonde, Lamba, and Bemba, I think. Actually, no, that's English. No, Kilwa was able to white peace Great Britain. Well done. And did I say kill what? I meant Cuba. Have a Nitrin army with a three star general, a 3641 here on Provence. Siena's army with a 453 up here uh, trying to join with Gascony, I think. They might be able to get Sicily off of Anjou, but I mean, they're pressed. There's 75,000 Brabantians. There's 68,000 Austrians. With 543. Actually, that, that's Joseph IV himself. 
Uh, well, wherever Sienna was, they were late in coming to that party, and they're going to hurt for it. Not quite a squish. Though I, I think Gascony's army might have squished. Oof. Brabant has actually got the occupation of Normandy. I mean, they do share this sea tile, the Straits of Dover. But, uh, <laughs> that would look pretty awkward. Please don't. Mare is still the Celestial Emperor, in name. Austria is still the Holy Roman Emperor. Notably, we do have Trier supporting East Frisia as Emperor now. And we actually have two votes for Prussia. I don't think Cologne is going to change their tune, and Austria is obviously not going to change their tune. But, uh, I think they might refrain from bringing in any more electors, because if they bring one in, it could sway it in Prussia's favor. Because the AI doesn't care about the game ending. What does that matter? Gonna make sure that the... I mean, the Holy Roman Empire has outlived its uh, real-life counterpart. Though, I'd say that that happens more often than it doesn't in EU4. Dismantling the Empire is hard. And outside forces generally have uh, trouble dealing with blobbed Austria. I like how Rome has been given to Sicily. Siena itself under siege by Austria, it is probably a level 9 fort. Yep, so... I mean, Austria has plenty of artillery to bring to bear, uh, but still a difficult fort to siege down. Wall breach has helped, though. Military points. I mean, artillery barrages are great. I'm glad that Paradox added that in. Waiting for sieges got really rough, and the extra, you know, fort artillery bonus got nice, or was nice, too. Spain jumped on it? Yep. Spain looking to expand into France, thinking uh, that this is Gascony's moment of weakness. They're probably right. But watch out, you've involved America. I wonder what uh, kind of ideas does the US have? Expansion, plutocratic, economic, Quality, quantity, mm -hmm. trade, espionage, admin. Huh. Well. Quality might help. And, you know, there might be some policies that they could use. There's Spain beating up on a uh, Gascon navy. Oh, okay, so Gascony has been made to release Brittany. I didn't think they still had cores over here, but I guess they do have their own culture, that being Breton. Uh, they don't lose Normandy, though. I'm, I'm glad Brabant didn't take that. And uh, they also were not made to give Orléans back to Austria, because Austria's core is gone. Nice. Does Provence still have cores down here? Yep, as does Toulouse. So Provence is actually the primary nation of Occitian. That's surprising. Austria did take back everything it wanted from the Pope. Notably, it does not have Ferrara back, though. And Malaya will take the long trek home. <laughs> Seems like we've seen them more involved in Europe than in Indonesia. And... Khmer. Wow, Khmer got quite a bit of mandate somehow. Uh... They no longer have that Empire of China in name issue. Did they switch cultures? No, they're still primary culture Khmer. Um, was it because they took Kaobong? Or uh, I'm not sure what got rid of that Empire in China in name modifier. I mean, it's not like they had the unguarded frontier disaster. Also, Kalka has, I think rebels have given it back, uh, set Serlig. Also, uh, Russia has had demands enforced on them by ERN separatists yet again. No surprise here, Japan wants its home islands back. Did they initiate this? No. No, Great Britain did. 
and they don't appear to be bothering with actually sending an army over there. Though they might. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, Austria, your name placement. No. Who all is involved against Gascony? Spain, just Spain and the colonies. And again, they have the US, Odiev, and Sardinia on their side. Spain probably has the advantage, but I see that Sardinia has. They've either gotten their army onto the continent, or they put it on ships and it got destroyed. <laughs> Though I think we'd see more uh, guys being built if that were the case. I mean, Odiev is being uh, pretty... They're not doing much. They're content to let Spain just march through them. With their emperor, no less. Still no allies. Ah, so Epirus has actually managed to ally Nitra. I mean, if, if they can attack Maria and bring Nitra in... I just want to see Greece formed. If Epirus does it, that's fine. I was rooting for Maria earlier, but that's because they were the only ones. The Emperor is still Austria. Looks like Joseph IV, uh... I mean, he was made general. That's... The, that tends to shorten lifespans. Lots of Imperial authority being lost, mostly because of lack of electors. And there are only two free cities, Fifth Martian and what, East Frisia? No, they're a duchy. Fifth Martian is still a free city. Um, I don't know if they're... where's the other one province minor prince? I thought East Frisia was it. Let's, let's check. Ulm. Yes, mighty Ulm. Partially disguised by hiding up against Austria, but because Prussia's had Ansbach for so long, uh, it doesn't exactly work. That said, Prussia is at war with Russia Lubick. Oh my! Norway has attacked Russia. Who all is at war with Russia? They have four wars going on. Norway, Vinland, Norwegian, Australia, Prussia, Great Britain, all the rest of the colonies, but also Brabant. Lord above. Then Poland, Austria, Persia, and Wu. And, and Zoidberg. Dang, I, I, hope, uh, I hope these wars can finish before uh, the game ends. I think they will. Dang. Come on, Poland. Give Odiev back to Odiev. Wow. Uh, I mean, Norway... Okay. I was going to say it looked like Norway wasn't doing anything, but nah, they're ready to occupy things. The old haunts of the city of Finnmark and uh, Novgorod and Finland, who've been gone for a while. May they rest in peace. Persia definitely looking like the winner right now. And it looks like Russia might actually be going over to uh, fight Wu instead of dealing with the Europeans. Don't see Wu's army. There's all the Malayan stacks, uh, having marched all the way across Eurasia, finally getting back home after that uh, war in which they helped Austria. Khmer is smacking Lan Na around. See revolutionaries for them? Still a kingdom for now, but, uh, well, that's not a lot of revolutionaries. I'm not sure. Right now, Sukhothai is Khmer's only tribute. Delhi able to take out those Bengali separatists. Bengal has been pretty stubborn. I mean, they've been really low on tech, but they've uh, survived pretty much by being disjointed, I suppose. 
Madurai's still only on tech 26. It's the end of the game, for goodness sakes. Russia's on 31. Poland has made it to 32. Poland can into space if they uh, take tech 32 admin. But Zygmunt II, the 644 naive enthusiast, uh, ready for action. So we did see a De Castro uh, about to rise to the throne if Zygmunt passes on. That's because Poland has allied Spain. That would be a scary alliance going into uh, Vicky II. Though I, I do not own Victoria 2, I don't plan on owning Victoria 2 anytime soon. Uh, for one, I'm still too, uh, too into EU4. And for two, Vicky 2 looks kind of counterintuitive in some ways. Russia has hired quite a bit of condottieri. Uh, we saw you know, some from Switzerland, some from Cologne. Wow. Hey, look, Cossacks. <laughs> but Prussia's gonna take care of those. Space Marines. There's some more over there. Poland willing to fight them, and Austria willing to help. Oh, man. Life not looking good for Russia right now. I mean... Their armies have been pushed by all of these enemies over into the east. I mean, they do have... I just pressed O instead of L. Oops. They're actually not even close to the biggest army in the world now. That's Spain, then Persia, then Great Britain, then Austria, and then Russia. They only have 189,000 right now. There's some particulars. There's some more Cossacks. All those war scores looking very negative. Uh, Poland out in the lead right now, but Wu also uh, pretty high war score against. Would that be... Okay. So the Emperorship did not change. But that sound played. <laughs> Maybe they... Because they got a tributary? Uh, is it just something that has to do with the Empire of China? I don't know. They took a lot of territory from Lan Na, though. Who now has to deal with a fairly small stack of revolu revolutionaries, but if they can't get an army up, those will still turn them into a, public a republic quite quickly. Look at this. We have Austrian armies in uh, in Mongolia <laughs> fighting Russia. It's 1818, though. They better peace out quick if they want their uh, territorial games to show up before the game ends. Is it like a race to Beijing? No, because Wu has it occupied. <laughs> Austria doesn't have an heir right now, so uh, the electors would pick... I think it would go to Prussia, but it might actually go to East Frisia. <laughs> East Frisia... That'd be sad. East Frisia's... Uh... For one, they're not in the em Empire. They... East Frisia somehow left the HRE. Um... I don't know how that happened. This war between Gascony and Spain is also continuing apace, but uh, ODF has marched its 100,000 over here to help out. Spain has only managed... To, like, they have gotten the capital in Bordeaux, and they did siege down the level 8 fort in the board. But Gascony has countered pretty hard with ODF and help, sieged down its own level 8 fort in Urgell. Uh, of course, their capital probably in either Toledo or Madrid. And Spain looked to be hurting pretty badly on manpower. Though I think Gascony... That seems to suggest to me that Gascony got stack-wiped. So maybe Spain will expand into France. Also, Spain has an army over here. Are they involved on 
Poland side, Norway side, in particular still rampaging all about. I don't see Spain anywhere in here. Looks like Wu is pieced out. Um. Yep, looks like they uh, took some border provinces. Russia can now try to fight the Europeans, who have marched all the way into China <laughs> to fight them. Now it can be a rush for Beijing. Who wants it? Only a level 2 fort. It's about as obsolete as it gets at this point. But it's now 1819. We've got a year and a half, guys. Well, more like... Uh, uh, it's a year and a half. Wu is actually back up into great uh, to the great power rankings right now. They took enough territory from Russia that they've uh, eclipsed Gascony, and Gascony having to get rid of that Breton land had to hurt too. So yeah, they've definitely established themselves as the second rate power. A, they, they wouldn't quite be a minor power in Vicky 2 because they'd be one of the top eight, but uh, you know. <laughs> Considering Austria has about double what uh, the next biggest great power has, I think it's fair to uh, to divide those up as I have. There's Brabant with 68k over here. Holland! Or rather, the, the low countries will march into China as well. It's not quite Sinasapel, but... Uh, you know. And Russia's army is just fleeing. There are so many people that they need to try to deal with here, but, I mean, that's about 100,000. Eh, it's like 70, actually. About 70,000 from Persia. About 100,000 from the polish nitrin austrian alliance, the Entente. But I think the game's going to end before they peace out. Shame, really. The AI not aware of when the game ends. But Khmer has retained the Celestial Emperorship and will do that until the end of the game. Assuming Wu doesn't Blitzkrieg them. Time is ticking, my friends. Time is ticking quite quickly. None of Russia's armies have been engaged by the Europeans, but they don't need to. I mean, they are at Neg 58, Neg 21, and Neg 11. <laughs> and that pretty well corresponds to the territories that have been occupied. And they have all the particulars over here still as well. Or maybe not. Maybe they enforced their demands. Or migrated east. Or got killed by all the people coming in trying to get, take a bite out of Russia. They have Crimean separatists, though. I, th I hope they were Theodoran. Ah, or er, Theodorian. I wonder what river that is. Anyways, so it is now November of 1820. This series is very close to its end. I will reiterate that uh, Russia not going to appear to piece them out. Here is how the old world looks in 1820. I'm going to go ahead and pause this on the uh, 31st of December. Here is how the old world looks at the end of the game. Props to uh, Persia, Austria, Spain, Great Britain, and Russia, despite the fact that they're getting wrecked right now. Those are your five greatest powers in the world. Also, uh, you know, good work for Malaya. And guys like Poland. I mean, Nitra, despite the fact that they didn't expand much past about 1550, uh, they still replaced Hungary and were a major player in a lot of European wars. So uh, they did well as well. Haha. -ha. Shout out, but maybe not props to Epirus and Morea. Uh, they didn't form Greece, but I was I was pulling for them. Shout out to Aretna, who is the sole surviving, sorry, 
Not quite. Aretna, who is the main Beylik, the main uh, bastion of Tur Turkish culture, but uh, Karaman did survive. Elodia looks to be uh, trying to take things from Egypt again, but their war will... will uh, that won't bear fruit either. Other than that, uh, I think Great Britain has kept a hold of every single one of its colonies. Yep. Despite a hard-fought war for independence uh, started by Newfoundland. Did not end up happening. Shout out to the USA, who uh, formed from Toulousian Florida and uh, have Oxitian culture. But, uh, you know, they, they did as much Manifest Destiny as they could, I suppose. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, they're completely surrounded by uh, British colonies. And, oh, I was going to say shout out to Apache if they were still around, but uh, unfortunately, British Mexico ate them. We do, however, still have Kalima and Shu that uh, were left untouched toward the end of the game, as well as Iroquois and Abenaki. Brittany... They weren't actually released up there, they were just handed cores back. Uh, they have survived, encased within British Mexico, long enough to be given their cores back on their hom homeland. Muisca, definitely the most uh, successful natives, owing to their alliance with Great Britain, which has prevented Spain from eating them and uh, all that fun stuff. In uh, Polynesia and Micronesia, we can see a lot of island colonization done. Great Britain got, got quite a few of them. Guat. Spain got a few of them. Uh, Japan, I think, got a couple. But it's uh, Norway and Brunei. Speaking of, there's a Russian 22 stack down here. Why, Russia, you are north. Why are you at the bottom of the world? <laughs> Anyways, uh... Brunei and Norway sharing New Zealand. That'll be an odd mix of cultures. Malacca, despite being kicked out of their uh, usual area by Majapahit turned Malaya, they did survive and escaped into different areas of uh, Indonesia, Micronesia, uh, Melanesia. I, I don't... Uh, not exactly sure which is which. And Japan... Did you... Are there any Brits left on your island? Ah. So, Great Britain retains Uzen in Japan, but uh, other than that, Japan has basically recovered from the British incursions. And that's about the world gone full circle. Thank you again, everybody, for watching The Great Partition. I'll go ahead and uh, click this through to the end screen. There we are. Scores, uh, that's probably a good thing to look at. So, for historical sp scores, Spain is on top with 7,400, then Great Britain and Russia, Austria in fourth, Venice surprisingly in fifth. They weren't really a big player towards the end game, but they did retain control of uh, a fair bit of the Eastern Adriatic, and they were a pretty solid great power at one point. Then we have Prussia and Denmark, Denmark solely due to survival, I think. Lubick there. Persia only with 600 somehow. That's silly. They should be far higher. But then Japan, the US, Morocco, the Pope, Brittany, and Iceland and Norway. I don't know how many of those are from... I mean, I think those are decided from this game. No technology group and no religion. Righty then. Well, thank you everybody for watching. Once again, this is the end of the first, at least, Great Partition. Uh, I'll be looking to do a more normal EU4 campaign next time. I think I'm going to look at the Uncommonwealth. Regardless, uh, we can see about that later on. Thanks a bunch, and once again, have a good one.